All right, glad to see everyone here with us this morning. Move that. Yeah, no, you're, oh. it's fine. I'll put it back up for just a no, minute. Right. Glad to see everyone here and <laughs> glad you get a blessing of the service today. Be much prayer for me and Brother Doc. And uh, if you want to open up your bulletins. Kim said, you're going to miss me next, next week. She said, I said, why? She said, I, I'm not going to be here. So, she said she's going to Ohio. So, see some cousins. Yeah, see some cousins. So, all right. Well, in our prayer list this morning, let's remember the uh, uh, Eddie Literal's wife that had passed away. It didn't give the name, but the, uh, let's remember that family. Name Judy. Judy. All right, Judy Literal uh, was her name. Vanna Sue said. Also, Talmage uh, Cantrell had passed away. Uh, that's uh, Johnny. Campbell's brother, and uh, he his wife texted me Friday evening on the way home and told me that he passed away. I just remember that family. Also, uh, all the names that's in our bulletins, the lost, especially those that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior, pray that somewhere down the road they'll realize they need Him in their life more than anything, that they'll give their life, give their life to Him. Uh, it says... Uh, Praise report, Randy Reisner and Teresa McCarty are both home now. And uh, Kenny Perry continues to improve. And Chelsea said, thanks to the Lord for all the linemen that were safe, uh, that was stayed safe during the storm that we had last week that they were out. I'm home doing better. Uh, Garrison Holiday and Ethel May Johnson both have received a good report, the results this week in their, uh, their test. Sure. And Charlotte, and let's remember her, and she had uh, texted Brother Tom this, and uh, said she uh, needs, still needs a lot of prayers. And uh, Tim Holbrook is thankful for all the prayers that's went up for his family. Let's continue to remember uh, Tim's uh, two brothers and the caretakers for them. Can I read this to me? Yes, and Tom's got to, to read this again for this morning. This is from Charlotte. Uh, we had sent them a card, and she... Text me back. Can somebody quieten that child down? It's like his papa. Like his mom. <clears throat> Said, I received your card. I appreciate the card so very much. The kindness and sincere sp spiritual prayers of each of you is such an inspiration. I'm facing a very scary, difficult time. I know many others are too. I feel the love of the church and the support for me. It lifts me up. I have so enjoyed the Bible study in the church over the phone because I'm too far away. I am uplifted hearing everyone's voices. It is like I am there. I am praying for you all and the church love Charlotte. So she appreciates all that everyone's doing. Okay. Also, Paul, uh, um, Doris's surgery went well. And I don't know if she did. No, she's not. And uh, Kimberly's uh, <clears throat> tests went well, too, I understand. Yeah, she's got more tests. Yeah. So. Garrison. Yeah, yeah. So we're so thankful for answered prayers. And uh, so let's continue to pray. Yes. I'd like to mention Glenn Blanton. He asked for our prayers. Uh, he's had a lot of health problems and starting a new round with his eyes. And then uh, Donnie Gillum. All right, yeah. Remember, Glenn Blanton and Donnie Gillum also. And somebody here today is a great, great grandmother once again. Yes. Congratulations, Miss Gay. Somebody else is a mother-in-law again. Grandmother. Yeah. Grandmother-in-law. It's a wonderful news. All right. Uh, so let's... Uh, we had some birthdays this morning. Uh, Miss Sharon had to stand up and give her 19 cents worth. So. <laughs> plus, plus, 19 plus. So. <laughs> uh, some uh, happy anniversaries, uh, Mr. Bobby Scott, and uh, congratulations. 
and uh, continued for to see that. Uh, our news and notes says the July men's breakfast and monthly meeting will be postponed until Saturday, July the 29th, due to the Independence Day. July the 9th. Did I say the 9th? What did I say? 29th. Well, I do have my other glasses on this morning, so. <laughs> so, that's the 9th, July the 9th. Uh, continue our, remember, our outreach programs, our family group, and uh, the uh, Christ Pantry, and uh, for the crackers from down there. And Dan, Brother Danny did a good job writing uh, in our bulletin this morning, the prodigal son, I really like that. So, uh, let's take time to remember those that are in need in our <coughs> prayers this morning. <coughs> remember our service. Remember why we're here and why we have the opportunity here for the men and women that stands for the freedom that gives their time, their life, that we have the opportunity to stand here in the freedom that we have. And uh, so let's, let's be uh, much prayer for our men and women that are in uniform this morning that stands, that supports it, and to give them support. As I turn it over to Brother Jimmy. This morning, the Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Somebody say amen. 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 And listen, what you make of that is entirely up to you. I need him every day of my life. And uh, so he, the Holy Spirit is here. Listen closely. If he convicts you of sin in your life and you're not a Christian, you need to do something about that. You need to change. And to his people, he says, be strong and of good courage. Our first song this morning is a song we haven't done here in a long time. There is a place, roses fade here. They go through that cycle I talked about this morning. And so we're going to sing about that. But there will be a place where they don't fade. The Revelations 2.7 uh Give, he is given to eat of the tree of life. Revelations 2 7. I am going to a city where the streets of gold are laid, where the tree of life is blue. Y'all sing. And the roses never fade. Yeah. I am going to a city where the roses never fade. In this world we have our troubles. Satan snares we must evade. We'll be free from all temptation. Where the roses never fade. Here they bloom but for a season. Soon their beauty is decayed. I am going to a city where the roses never fade. Sad one's gone to be with Jesus. That's one on uh, one of our tapes that we put all those songs together. That's 
appropriate for a funeral service. Those tapes are back there. Please take some. There's no charge. There's no strings attached. Just take them, listen to them. Uh, they'll be very, very, they're very, very helpful. Okay, number 575, Sunshine in My Soul. Now, the scripture for that is in Court, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. He hath shined in our hearts. That's part of the verse. There's sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, while the peace of happy moments roll with Jesus. His smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There's music in my soul today, a carol to my King. And Jesus, listen, he can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, the sun. Happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There's springtime in my soul today. For when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart. The flowers of grace appear. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine. While the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today. And hope and praise and love for all the blessings which He gives me now, for joy laid up above. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, while the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows this smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. That sounded good. When you come before the Lord, He said, come with thanksgiving. Thankful. This is our prayer song. Uh, it's kind of a song of commitment. When I say, I belong to you. You know, that's commitment. And I hope we can all make that. Prayer request outside of the prayers that we've had. Mary Lou called me this week, and the reason she wasn't here last week is she, she's got COVID. And her time was up either today or tomorrow. She couldn't remember which, so she's just playing it safe. There you go. Hopefully be back next week. All right. Mary Lou's been, well, now that, I ain't telling her age. <laughs> but she's been around here a long time. <laughs> I've seen her running around. Woo. Uh... Anyone else? I think Jacob and Larissa both had COVID. Yeah, I called Jacob, and Jacob and Larissa have it. And uh, Jacob and I talked quite a while. He's a, he's a nice young man. I called him one night. I was looking for a kid that was kind of related to us, and her mother, his mom called him. And I said, I'm not able to go, but uh, I know somebody can. He's visiting somebody up on Calvary Ranch. But anyway, Jacob went, and he come down and told me, you know, things like that make a difference. It's the grace that Tom talked about this morning. People see more. They really do. They see more than they hear. Let me give you something to wrestle around this week. Remember this. The sins of many 
The sins of a few affect many. I'll get it right. The sins of a few affect many. The sins of this nation are now costing you, people who live right, but you still... Sin is no good for anybody. Anybody else? Jimmy, I have a couple of co-workers. Their parents are struggling with health issues. Remember them? Okay. Tom's co-worker. Uh, parents struggling with health issues. And somewhere it's going to catch me, but it's going to have to run fast. I got up this morning, forgot my hearing aids, and Sue forgot to do her hair. <laughs> I, I might lose, lose my dinner over that, but I can't help it. We was going down the road, and I said, I forgot to put my hearing aids in. She said, oh, I forgot to do my hair. <laughs> Have you laughed any this week? If yeah. not, let's do it today. Let's do it today. Anybody else? I'd like to remember my grandson's wife. She's going tomorrow to have her baby. Okay. Now, Kim, repeat that again. I ain't got my hearing aids. My grandson's wife, remember her in prayer, that she's going to have her baby tomorrow. Okay. That's your grandson, your grandson's wife. Yeah, it'll be my great-granddaughter, the first great-granddaughter. Wow, you're not old enough yeah. to have I a baby. I have three great-grandsons. So oh. first great-granddaughter, yeah. So All right, remember her. Her grandson's <laughs> wife's going to have a, a little fella. Girl, boy. You know yet? Girl. Girl. Now I'm going. Go, I'm going in the store and see all them pretty little dresses. I know. Y'all get hats. Nobody. Just keep on. I hope I don't take too much of Paul's time, but we're having a good time, Martin. It's not my time. Oh, Jimmy, okay. Ronnie said to remember him and Charlene. Okay, remember Ronnie and Charlene. Uh, Ronnie's going to have to have some surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Treatments. What? Treatments. Yeah, well, treatments. Treatments. I'll get it right. And uh, yeah, Charlotte. Uh, uh, I started to say it'd be a good thing, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody else? If you if you ask for a prayer, can I bring out the volume? Addison, uh, my little granddaughter Addison. Uh, we just got over COVID a couple of weeks ago, and now she has strep. So uh, keep her in your prayers, and my. Granddaughter and new grandson-in-law uh, are on their honeymoon, so Ooh. they're traveling. So, okay. Down to Jamaica. Those granddaughters, <laughs> they're giving you a hard run, aren't uh, they? They are. <laughs> Nothing like them. I think. I hope you could remember Sharon. Jim, or uh, here, Sharon. Just remember my uh, youngest sister, Mary. She's having trouble with fluid on her lungs and. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, he's worked with him. Uh, he's in St. Joe East in Lexington. Uh, and that's what he's having there, taking a lot of fluid off his lungs. His name's Russ Rogers. Okay, Russ Rogers and Paul's sister Mary struggling. If you're here today and healthy, if you're halfway healthy, you're blessed. You're blessed. Yeah. Okay, Carrie Smith, okay. Uh, that's Josh and them's, uh, Hunter and them's mom. That's tough. Anybody else? Number four. Don't just sing through the song. Those are good words. We need to repeat them in the presence of God. The scripture for that is found in Hebrews 10, chapter 22. Let us draw near with a true heart. Draw near with a true heart. 
I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of love, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and I will be lost in mine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious fleeting sight. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I when I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious Narrow depths of love that I cannot know Till I cross the narrow sea There are lights of joy that I may not reach Till I rest in peace with Thee Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the Driving with Jenny and I were driving back from uh, South uh, Carolina yesterday. Had a close call, and I got to thinking about uh, one of Jesus' parables, where he, there were ten that were blessed, but only one returned to give thanks. And that's where we don't want to be. We we want to be very thankful for all the blessings we've had. We're gonna ask Brother Dan to come up and lead us in prayer. <coughs> Dear Lord, we're thankful that we're able to be here today, Lord. We're thankful that we can be a part of this service. We're thankful, Lord, that we can have this opportunity to give you praise and give you the glory. We know, Lord, how, how great and wonderful you are, and, and we have so much to be thankful for. Lord, we, we had many prayers answered here lately, and we pray that that we will continue to pray. We know that prayers come up and, and you answer them. Lord, we, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted. Uh, we're thankful for those, Lord, that have been healed, for those who have had you know, recent tests and recent surgeries, Lord, and they've, they've gone well. We're thankful for the Amen. newborn babies and the baby on the way, uh, the, the marriages. Lord, there, there's so many things for us to be thankful for. And we pray that you'll continue to be with us. We pray, Lord, that we will continue to serve you, that we will continue to follow your word. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Brother Jim Frederick and, and Paul Jarvis today, Lord, as they bring your word. That each and every individual here today might be blessed by the hearing of your word. That uh, we will not only hear it and understand it, but take heed and follow it and share it with others as our week goes on. Pray for our nation, Lord. 
We're thankful for many things there as well, but we continue to to see so much evil in the in the world today, Lord. And we understand, Lord, that those things happen, and we ask that you would give us the faith to understand it, the faith to understand that it's according to your will, that you see the big picture, and you, you got things taken care of. Dear God, we, we love you so very much, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that came into this world and suffered and died for us. All these things we pray in his name. Amen. 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 Jeannie yeah, and I had several close calls. I was telling a friend of mine once about a couple of them. And I said, when I'm driving, Jeannie won't blink. She just won't blink. I can understand that. We're going to... We're going to have uh, our service this morning for uh, Fred and, and uh, uh, Fruit of the Vine, which to us represents our Lord's sacrifice on the cross, uh, the forgiveness of our sins. We're, go we're going to take a reading uh, this morning. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, starting with verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we're going to have the verses of another song. What's the number? 294. 294. And uh, Deacon Delver's helper, Sir. <coughs> From the book of 1 Corinthians, 11th chapter, and the 26th verse. As often as you eat and drink, you do show the Lord's death until he come. By Christ redeemed in Christ restored, we keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord until he comes his body given in our stead is seen in this memorial bread and as we we see the blood until he comes. And thus as our betrayal night, if this last advent we unite by one bright chain of love, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this, another Lord's day that we can come and commune with you and remember that day, dear Heavenly Father, that you sacrificed yourself on the cross. As we partake of this unleavened bread, we think of that body that suffered so much for our sins. We pray that we take this in the way that it leads us to be in Christ's name. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue in our prayer, we take this cup, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ, and he gave himself on the cross for our sins, Lord
please raise your hand and we'll be glad to serve you. Sunday morning, we're offered an opportunity to return a portion of what we've been blessed with back to the service of the Lord and uh, uh, help ch the church carry out its functions. Uh, we take a reading this morning. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 9th chapter, starting verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. <coughs> Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or in the compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, that you will abound in every good work. Another verse, another song in the past collection. Number 512. I want to say, because I, I have to do things when I think of it. JJ, it's good to see you here. We've missed you. All right. The scripture is Galatians 2.20. The world's Bible, it's not the scripture, but it says, Christ liveth in me. Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet to lead men in the way. He has no tongue but our tongue to tell him how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world Sure, it'll be used for the uplifting of the church. I want to turn the service now with Brother Paul. <coughs> Thank you, Brother Doc. Well, thank the Lord for once again for an opportunity that we can stand among the living and proclaim His Word and to spread His gospel. <coughs> I want to turn to your Bibles to chat to uh, Jeremiah chapter six. It's been said that I uh, takes a while to get a message out, so you might want to sit back and for about an hour, and uh, you might get through this by the end. There's a lot, I've got a lot of reading to do, a lot of scriptures to write, to read. So your your dinner. Might get scorched if you got it in the oven. Uh, so Zeke, you can tell Patsy that at dinner you're going to bring home might be a little while. <laughs> but uh, you are kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Uh, 
About one thirty. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. No. Uh, You're better than I am. <laughs> most of the sermons that I bring is mostly is to keep me in line. And to keep me searching for the old path. Brother Tom, a couple weeks ago, read in Jeremiah about the old path. And the path that we need to walk in, even though sometimes I stray, you know, by letting the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life get in our way. And we all have this problem that we fight with because we're all natural. The old natural man fights against the spiritual man. And so many people are in the same way, in the same boat, that I'm in. You can't say that that you're not. If you're not, you're deceiving yourself and Satan's deceiving you. Because we all have this drawing, this yearning that we had before that we became a child of God that Satan wants you back. He's pulling you, tugging you, tormenting you every day. Single day. Amen. But we need to listen to what God told Jeremiah to tell the people of Judah. And we need to do the same. Jeremiah the sixth, <clears throat> starting with verse 16, it said, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, And see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk. There you go. He goes on to say, And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I will set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of my trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Isn't that the way it is today? People do not want to walk in the ways of God. They don't want to search for the old path. They want to search for a new path. A path that leads to destruction and chaos and eventually eternal death. He said, Therefore hear ye nations and know, O generations, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. He will bring to pass the fruits of their thoughts, the things that they're doing. God says, stand still and look for the old path, which is the good way, and when we find them, we're to walk in them, mm -hmm. and when we find them, we will find rest for our souls. If we're searching for that old path, if we're looking for it, if we're reading God's word, the people were stubborn in Jeremiah's days. People are stubborn today. Mm -hmm. They have evil thoughts in their hearts continually. People refuse to walk in the traditional way of true righteousness. The path that God had laid out for them, but they chose their own path. People today are choosing their own path. They don't want to follow God's path that he had laid out for them. I have to find, fight myself to stay in that old path. I have to go back and look for that old path sometimes because I stray away from it. I'm no better than anybody else. But I have to fight for that to stay on that path daily. 
people are going and following their own path. They've gone the way of Cain. And that way can only lead to destruction. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, he said, but the end thereof is death. You better make sure that what path that you're on is the path of God. There's so many people that's standing in the pulpits of preaching any old way and you can get to heaven. You can do this or you can do that instead of doing what the Word of God says. Amen. The difference between the way of righteousness and life and the ways of ungodly and death are found in the Scriptures. And we are reminded of them. The Word of God gives us the path of life. The ways of the world leads us to death and hell. If you keep following the path of man, that's exactly where you're headed. Because man will lead you to hell. Jesus Christ will lead you to life everlasting. Amen. Jeremiah 18, 15 says, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity or worthless idols. People today are giving unfruitful incense to God. And they have caused them to stumble in the ways from the ancient past the ancient path is what led us to Christianity. The ancient path is going, to what is going to lead you to life eternity. It goes on to say, to and walk in paths in ways not cast up. They're walking in paths and highways that God did not provide for them. What path are you walking today? Are you walking in man's Path, or are you walking in the old path that God provided for you and me? The sixth chapter of Romans, starting with four, verse 14, says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We talked about grace this morning in Sunday school. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. We shouldn't go on and keep sinning. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. If you obey the devil, you're the devil's child. If you obey Jesus Christ, you're, the, you're a child of God. He says, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. He says, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto ye. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of man, men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members' servants to unrighteous, to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. You yielded your servant, your, your, your body, to sin when you were under without Christ. Now that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we need to yield our members, our self, servants to Jesus Christ. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things are death. 22 says, But now being made free from sin, we are free from sin if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, That's right. and become servants to God, ye have your fruits unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. And verse 23 says, 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us not give unto sin and iniquity, wherein we were ashamed. We were ashamed of the things that we did in our life when we were without, when we were without Christ. We're ashamed. I'm ashamed of what I've done when I was a sinner. I'm ashamed for not serving Jesus Christ all my life. You should be ashamed of the things that you've done in your life when you were without Christ. But now we are set free from sin that we may produce fruits of holiness. And that in the end, as the Word of God says, that we may have eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> David, a man after God's own heart. David did many things that was wrong. Moses, that led the children of Israel out of Egypt, sinned against God. But God was faithful to bring them back into his service. Psalms 1 begins the line set of what the Psalms is all about. It's about righteousness. It's about ungodliness. And it's about God. How God can lead you through all of your troubles and trials and temptations. Mm -hmm. He will help you to get back onto that old path that you lost, that you walked off of. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Are you meditating day and night? Or do you ever pick up your Bible and read it? Or do you let somebody else read it for you and explain it to you? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6 says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the ways of the ungodly shall perish. If you're off of that old path, if you're straight away from it, or if you've never been on it, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. He said, but today. That's right. You need to find that path. And we need to stay on that path. Though it's mighty hard sometimes. The world is pulling at you. They've got many devices out there. They've got many trickets, many toys for you to play with and many deceits. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, 14 says, Enter ye into the straight gate, the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. There's many on that road, that wide and broad road. Oh, the road's clean. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. It's hard to get a lot of people on a narrow road. 
your elbow to elbow. He said, which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. There are few people that are looking for that old path. There are few people that are on that old path. The old path that was made for you and I. There are many people on the wrong path headed to a devil's hell. There are very few people searching for the old path. The sinful path. They're on a sinful path that leads to destruction. People are not searching for the path anymore, nor the way of God. And he has provided, but they're going their own way. Look how the world is going today. As Jimmy says many times, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. They want you to do, believe anything that was right is now wrong. Mm -hmm. Anything that is wrong is now turned around that it's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> They've gone the way of the world. And I said before, I say many times, that the church has let the world infiltrate them by the beliefs that they put upon them. The Word of God has not changed from day one. Right. As you want to read this just in a few minutes. The church has let the world's belief come in and infiltrate their hearts and their minds. Their hearts are evil. Their hatred, lies, deceits, murders, adulterers, fornications. These are not the past that Jeremiah talked about. These are the paths path that Satan will lead you down and they want you to follow. In the second Chronicles, starting in the seventh chapter, this is a covenant that God made with Solomon. And we can have this same covenant today. God told this to Solomon. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, you, if you're a Christian, you're called by his name. If you're a Christian, you are called by God, you're called by Jesus Christ. You carry his name. He said, if they shall humble themselves and pray and seek, my face. Are you seeking God's face? And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. And he goes on and says in verse 15, he says, Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears Attend unto their, the prayer that is made in this place. God's eyes are open. His ears are listening for the prayers of repentant people to turn to him and follow the path, the straight and narrow path that he provides for you and me. And sometimes we need to stop and look around us and ask for that old path. And then we must follow that old path. Just as Solomon, God told Solomon, if the people will humble themselves, he will forgive their sins and heal their lands. James tells us the same thing in chapter 4. Chapter 4, beginning in verse 4, he says, Ye adulterers, 
and adulteries, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the immunity with God. We are enemies to God, the ways of the world are. He said, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, <clears throat> but giveth grace unto the humble. Yeah, that's right. He says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Are you resisting the devil today? That's right. Sometimes it's hard. You get up in the morning and he's on your back. You go through the day and he's on your back. You lay down at night and he's on your back. He's tormenting you all through the night with dreams. But what, look what verse 8 says. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. We need to cleanse our hands. And we need to purify our hearts. And let the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct our path. He said, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. And your joy to heaviness. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. That right. we have to be humble. We have to humble ourselves to Jesus Christ. We need to let him lift us up. We need to, be, we need to stop being unfruit, unfaithful to God and being a friend to the world. By doing the things we're committing, Spiritual adultery if we're doing these things because we are unfaithful to Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for our sins, who shed his life-giving blood and hung between the heavens and the earth for you and I. We cannot be a lover of the world and a lover of God at the same time. You are either the hold to the one and let the other one go. We need to resist the devil and draw nigh to God. The prophets were God's watchmen. They spread God's message on behalf of the people to warn them. In Malachi... Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare you the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord. Verse 5 says, And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hirelings in wages, the widows, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from the right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. <coughs> As I said earlier, the word of God does not change. If there's any change in it's within you and I, not God. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He said, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Here we are talking again about the old path. God says, return unto me. 
return back to that old path that you were on. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, where shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. This nation that we live in right now, the majority of the people have robbed God. That's right. How they robbed God? By not obeying Him. By not giving their life to Him. By living in any all the filthiness of sin that they can come up with. Now I want you to look at verse 10. He says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herein, or herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. If we return to God and we do the things that God wants us to do, He will bless us with a measure that's indescribable. He said, return to me and I will return to you. We have robbed God by not praying enough, singing his praises, by not repenting enough, by not giving enough of our time and our duty to him and to others. And when we bring our offerings to him, he is going to bless us Also in Malachi chapter 4, he says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. He said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to to their fathers, <clears throat> lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse 10. <clears throat> He says, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the, thy way before thee. Who's he talking about? John the Baptist. He said, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist was brought, <coughs> prepared the way of the Lord. The least that was in heaven, Jesus Christ that came and died on the cross for our sins, is greater than John the Baptist. He said, And from the days of John the Baptist until now the coming, until now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent taketh it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. John was the last of the prophets. John, even though it's in the New Testament, John the Baptist was considered one of the Old Testament prophets because the New Testament 
The new dispensation of time hadn't started yet. They were still living under the old law. He says, and if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. If you will receive the message that John was preparing for Jesus Christ. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. God sent his messengers in olden times. He is sending his messengers today to warn the people to search for the old path and to flee the destruction that is to come by accepting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as their personal Savior. How do you do that? And that's by repenting of your sins, asking God to forgive you of all that you've done wrong, confessing Him before men, and being baptized for the remission of sin. And that's not all that you have to do. You have to endure to the end. There's a prize to be won. There's a prize to lose. If you don't win the prize... The loss that you will gain is eternal damnation in hell without Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. As we get ready to sing number 633 <clears throat> like the song that we sing is my name written there on the page bright and fair in the book of <clears throat> he He's coming back. He's coming back to get his church. And there's going to be a separation one day between those that serve God and those that do not serve God, that are not on the old path and that are, are not walking in the new way. The old path. They're not searching for rest for their souls. Jesus Christ today, as we stand and sing, can give you rest for your souls. Yep. <clears throat> Prepare to meet thy God. Amos 4, 12. Careless soul, why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear ye now the invitation. Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning for your life. Soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. I'm prepared to meet thy God. Why so thought of sorrow you standing while the fleeting years go by and your 
your life is spent in folly. Oh, prepare to meet thy God, careless soul. Day. I had a little thing here. We get these uh, daily bread, Joe's orders, we, we read them. And uh, it's talking about, I was mentioning about Moses and David, but <clears throat> about Psalms 143. It says, The great king, this is a Talking about David, the great king's heart was dismayed. He was in trouble. We're all in trouble today. We have trials, temptations on every hand. But David paused, he stopped, and he prayed. What did he pray for? He said, Show me the way I should go. Yeah. If the man after God's own heart felt lost from time to time, it's a given we too need to turn to God for his directions. David got lost time to time, but he always turned to God for directions. We get lost from time to time. And we always need to turn back to God for directions. For the old path. Anybody else got anything? Tonight at seven, seven. seven. virtual and six out on the ground. So is that right? Six. Wednesday night at 7. Paul, I'd like to say one thing. Uh, um, if you notice the grounds and stuff now, they're pretty. And uh, our youth are doing that. Uh, it gives them responsibility. Uh, they make them some money, and they go to certain places, good places. And I, I want to encourage you to, this is a good place. This is a good place. Nobody will tell you wrong in this place. And if you're straying in life and you're about to make a decision, you can get in more trouble in five minutes than you can get out of in a lifetime. That's to the young people or anyone else. But I want to thank Joe and Paul, Josh. Uh, Jackie. Huh? Jackie. And Jackie. And Jackie. All, and, and all of our bosses. 
Yeah. I'm not going to repeat that. That could be dangerous. But I want to say, the youth, there's a lot of churches closing their doors today because they didn't think enough about their youth to love them and nourish them and bring them up. This is a good place. And someday it'll be your place. But I wanted to say that and, and thank you. I know in our business meeting, uh, business meeting, we were electing officers. Joe said, I'll take the youth. That's a big responsibility, but my goodness, it's so rewarding in later years to have kids come up and say, you helped me. And uh, I just wanted to say those things. There's some literature, bro. Brother Dan, I think them had these. These are, I think, for Bible school. Dan made a lot of copies of them. They're in the back back there. And uh, I had Patsy make a bunch of these here. These are Bible references, front and back. Pick some of those up and take them with you and give them to somebody. Get you a tape or two, or three or four. <laughs> Nothing else. Sean Connolly, you just missed us today. Hey, one other thing, you know, that little joke I told you about Sue. I turned right around to her, she's driving, and I said, but you're pretty. Oh, Lordy.